Now that we've graphed some more functions in polar coordinates, it's time to talk about converting between polar and rectangular systems. We've already noted that rectangular coordinate representations of points are unique, so there's a unique way to convert from polar coordinates to rectangular. But we've also noted that polar representations aren't unique, so there isn't a unique transformation in the other direction. We'll start with the unique path. When we convert, we almost always identify the origins of each system and align the polar axis with the non-negative x-axis. Let's fade out the polar grid and look at this point labeled with its polar coordinates. Trigonometry tells us that this, the y-coordinate of the point, is r times sine theta. It also tells us that this, the x-coordinate of the point, is r times cosine theta. You can verify that these identities are true regardless of which quadrant the point is in and regardless of which particular polar representation of the point is used. To convert from rectangular to polar is a bit trickier. First notice that the Pythagorean theorem tells us that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. So r equals plus or minus the square root of x squared plus y squared. Also notice that tangent of theta equals y over x. Both of these are troublesome, though, especially the tangent formula, since it's not even defined when x equals 0. That being said, they're only trouble if you try to apply them blindly. If you draw a picture like this one and think about what's going on, you can use these to obtain a polar expression of a point. Let's look at two examples. First, let's convert x squared plus y squared equals 25 into polar coordinates. Since x squared plus y squared equals r squared, we get r squared equals 25, or r equals plus or minus 5. This is a circle of radius 5 centered at the origin, which we should have already known by looking at the original rectangular equation. Now let's convert r equals sine theta into rectangular coordinates. I said in the previous video that this is a circle, and now we can verify it. If we multiply both sides of this equation by r, we get this and each side converts nicely into rectangular coordinates like this. In the next step, we'll not only move the y to the other side, but also add one-fourth to each side. We do that to complete the square using y squared minus y, so we can write this in its final form like so. This is the equation of a circle centered at the point 0, 1 half, which is exactly what we graphed earlier. There's another way that we think of converting from rectangular to polar coordinates, and it's actually something we've already used when we graphed polar functions. We relabel the Cartesian plane using theta and r. This gives us a correspondence between horizontal lines in the rectangular system and circles in the polar system, centered at the origin. Remember that this line is actually wrapped infinitely many times around this circle. It also gives us a correspondence between vertical lines in the rectangular system and rays emanating from the origin in the polar system. If we want to be precise, then we actually get a line in polar coordinates since r can be positive or negative. We used this idea when we sketched the graph of sine in rectangular coordinates to help us graph r equals sine theta in polar coordinates. Moving this vertical line across the rectangular graph corresponds to circling this ray around the origin, each one tracing the associated graph of sine. 